Makoto Shinka. You might have never heard his name before, but many of you are probably familiar with his films. Garden of Woods, 5 centimeters per second, and probably the most famous of them, Your Name. Shinkai's style is pretty distinct. His visuals are like an alternate version of reality, with shiny objects and saturated colors. Lots of lens flares and bloom. His latest creation is called Suzumi, which is visually spectacular. I watched the whole anime and I was like, I want to try and see if I can make some of the scenes in Blender. So here I am recording this video. Today I will be showing you how I made this animation. And also this version of it, which is a little bit different in shading. Keep watching to see how. But before we begin, I want to show you something. This is my first ever attempt to create something that looks like an anime. Now, if you pay attention, there is no cell shading, no NPR materials. I mean, it's not perfect, but I think it kind of looks like some anime film a little. What gives it that look is lighting. It's all about light. This is how I rendered this animation without using any NPR shaders, except for the car. I'll show you how to set up this kind of lighting, which is actually very simple. I used kit bash assets to put the scene together. But for this video, I also recorded some modeling process, just to show you how easy and quickly you can model some assets for this scene. But you don't have to do that. You can just get some models of road fences and road assets on Sketchfab, and just use them instead if you want. So if you're not interested in the modeling process, you can just go ahead and skip the next 9 minutes. Let's begin. Let's start by deleting everything. Hit Shift A to add a new plane. And then S and X to scale on the X axis. Shift A again, add a new plane and hit R and X so you can rotate it on the X axis. Then hit Tab to enter the edit mode. Hit Ctrl R to add a loop cut. Select the bottom face, hit X to delete it. Shift right click to move the cursor to the plane, then right click and set the origin to 3D cursor. Go to the modifiers tab and add a mirror modifier. Select the Z axis, now go back to the edit mode, select the top edge, press G to move it down. With the top edge selected, press E to extrude and X to extrude on the X axis. Adjust the position of the edge with G and then hit E again to extrude. Select this edge and press Ctrl V to bevel. You can use the scroll to adjust the amount of bevel. Exit the edit mode, right click on the object and select Shade Smooth. Now go to the Modifiers tab and apply the Mirror Modifier. Go on and adjust the scale furthermore to achieve your desired result. Hit Shift A and add a cube, move it behind the fence, hit Tab to enter the edit. Press S and then X to scale it on the X axis, hit Ctrl R and add two loop cuts. Hit S and Y to move them on the Y axis. Alt-click on the middle face to select the entire middle faces. Go to Faces and select Extrude Faces along Normal. Then hit S and X to scale it. You can add a bevel modifier if you want. Move it to the middle of the fence. Now with this model selected, hold Shift and select the fence and hit Ctrl J to merge them. Now add an array modifier, increase the numbers and change the position. Select the plane in the middle and change the scale to make it a little bit wider. Press Shift A, add another cube and change the scale on the X axis and Z axis. Mm -hmm. 
Then go to the edit mode, select the bottom edge, hit G and move it forward slightly. Add a loop cut and move it down. Now select the bottom face, hit E to extrude and move it forward. Select this edge, hit Ctrl B to add the bevel. Also add some bevel to the top edge. Right click on the mesh and select Shade Smooth. Go to the Object Data Properties, go to the Normal tab and check Auto Smooth. This way you can get rid of the weird shading. Great, now add an array modifier and increase the numbers. Hit Shift D to duplicate the model, move it to the other side of the street and rotate. Now scale it down and increase the count number in the array modifier until it fills the entire row. Great, now you can start moving things around, scaling them up and down until everything looks good. I'm gonna make a street light with a cylinder. I'm just gonna fast forward this one, basically repeating the same things I've been doing. Extruding, rotating, and scaling until I get something that looks good enough to be presented as a street light. I'll probably make a tutorial about all the basics that you need to know when you start using Blender, but that's for the future videos. Now, select the road, go to the edit mode, and add some loop cuts. Add a bunch of them, horizontally and vertically. Repeat the same process for all the assets. Go on and apply all the modifiers. Now select the street light, select the road fences, and in the end select the road itself and press Ctrl J to merge them. But hold on a second, before you do this, you should assign a material to each one of them and apply the textures. You can visit websites like textures.com or ambient CG to download free high quality materials and textures for your project. When you're done texturing your assets, now you want to make this road circular, which is also perfect for making a loop video if that's what you guys are gonna go for. First shift A, go to curves, and add a circle curve. Now add an array modifier to the road, increase the count. Go on and add a curve modifier next. In the curve object, select the circle curve. Hey, don't freak out, your models didn't disappear. They are there, you just have to move the camera a little to see it. Now just play with the size of the circle curve, the X factor of the array modifier, and the array count till you get the perfect circular roll. Great, now the road is ready. It's time to bring in some vehicles. Go to sketchfab.com. There you can find many good vehicle models. Just download the ones that you need. I choose to download this generic passenger car pack and it has a few vehicles in it. I'm just gonna need two of them. Let's get back to Blender. You can see the scene with the MPR shader applied to all of the assets. I showed you guys exactly how to make an NPR shader in my previous video. Go on and check it out if you haven't watched it yet. Before we proceed, I want to show you how you can set up this kind of lighting. Here's the same scene without the MPR shader. This is just a normal material with principal BSDF. It has normal map, roughness, metallic, everything set up. So to achieve this kind of lighting, we need a couple of very strong light sources with warm colors. Shadows must have a cooler color and look bluish. We need an ambient light to shift the color of the shadows to a bluish color. And we also need to enable bloom and turn up the intensity. As you can see, I have a very strong spotlight here with a very high power and a warm color. I also have a sun with a high power and a warm color. Thank you. 
Now for the shadows in the word properties, I have a blue color and the strength set to 0.4. You can turn down the strength if you want darker shadows. And that's how you can get this kind of look for your render. It's actually very simple to achieve the animation without setup. I'm not moving the car here, I'm just rotating the road, creating that illusion of movement. Just create an empty and set the empty as the road's parent. Now you can go to the properties tab of the empty, in the rotation of z-axis, type hashtag frame slash 100. Time to import the vehicle models that we downloaded. This is the vehicle with the MPR shader applied to it, placed right in front of the camera. In this model that I downloaded, all of the parts of the vehicles are separate, including the wheels, which is great for animating the wheels. Just choose one of the wheels in the properties tab, rotation, select the X axis and type hashtag frame slash 100. The number is going to determine the speed, you can change that if you like. Do the same for all of the wheels on the vehicle. Alright, come here for a second. Let me show you how important Bloom is in making this kind of render. Here you can see I imported my sky which is just an image of an animal sky. I'm gonna turn the Bloom on and off so you can see the difference. It just plays a major role in the scene. Let's take a look at the material for the sky. As I told you, it's just an image that you can download from the internet. You can even use AIs like Stable Diffusion to generate images like this. Plug the image of the sky into the base color and the emission and turn up the emission. Usually it's better to go for a number higher than two to get that really nice bloom effect out of the sky. Next, I'm gonna import the hills and the trees. These are just PNG images imported as planes. I used some brushes in Photoshop to paint these images using reference. But if you want to create these anime trees inside of Blender, it's totally possible. You can check out the two videos made by Kristoff and Lightning Boy Shader. Links in the description. Each one of these videos is almost 30 minutes long, so it contains all of the details. You can go check them out. Then we have these bushes next to the room. It's just a duplicate of one of those layers in the background. You set its origin to the 3D cursor. And then you duplicate it, hit R to rotate it, and left click to just leave it there. Now if you just press Shift R continuously, it continues to duplicate this layer. Just keep going until it forms a circle. Then animate it with the same method that we used for the road. Then what you want to do next is keyframe these planes and move them slightly from left to right. Do the same for the sky. This way you can add a little bit of movement to your elements in the background. Alright, let's go to the other scene. So this is the scene with the NPR shader applied to all of the assets. Again, if you haven't watched my previous video about how to make this shader, you can go and watch it right now. Here's the link. So for the color of the car, I changed it using a hue and saturation node. I thought it's better to change the color a little bit here. Alright, the last thing, second car. When you're done setting up the shader for this one, 
add the curve and uh, set the curve as a little parent. You can animate the curve using keyframes or just use the method that we used for the road. Here you can see me adding an object constraint and adding a child of and setting the target to the Bayesian curve that I just created. You can just do that and then, as I said, set up some keyframes and animate the curve to rotate the car. Alright, if you go on and hit render animation right now, you're gonna get a result like this, which is looking good, but it's not quite the same thing that I showed you in the beginning of the video, right? There's something missing. All right, here's the secret sauce, a little bit of compositing. Let me show you. Let's go to the compositor. All right, as you can see, I added a bunch of notes here. I really have no idea what the hell I just did. I mean, I experimented with this like for a little bit. You can take a screenshot if you want and use it in your own project. And uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna let you take a look at this. That's it, I'll just leave it there. And that's how I made this animation. I hope you liked it. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time, goodbye.